Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I started this channel to show you all how I grow and manage my orchid collection in the home, but also to provide a diary of my orchid progression that I can share with you all. Uh, I wanted to do this to add another voice to the orchid care mix. Uh, as you know, how you grow your orchids in the home is so dependent on your environment and temperature. I felt that the more channels out there showing how people successfully grow their orchids in different conditions and different environments, the more informed people can be on how they might be able to arrange their setups to grow their orchids more successfully, or do something differently, or just learn about a new type of orchid. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce you to each section of my grow room and how I provide an environment that works for me. So this environment helps me manage a large collection in a quite a limited time frame. I'll make separate videos with more in-depth care tips for each of the types of orchids that I grow, but I can't fit this all in, in one video. I did try and it was over an hour, so I'm not going to bore you all with that in one go. So this is just going to be a brief introduction with more in-depth care tutorials to follow. So as you can see, for the most part, I provide quite a lot of artificial light, which is supplemented by natural light from a window in my grow room. I'll start you off with the Miltoniopsis and Oncidium shelf that you can see here. So with my Miltoniopsis, I managed to grow these quite successfully even in a warm environment. So my temperatures range from sort of 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, but sometimes they can go more towards the 30 Celsius range actually. Um, my humidity stays between 60 and 75%. I keep my Miltoniopsis all in self-watering pots in a mixture of perlite and sphagnum moss. Uh, I love these orchids, I love Miltoniopsis and I love being able to grow them in the home. And I think the key to keeping them in one environment is just to keep them um, moist but not soggy at all times. And if you can provide it some extra humidity in, with a humidifier, then that would be great because I do use a humidifier to keep the humidity in a higher range. I'll just take you in for a closer look. My Miltoniopsis uh, and Oncidiums are on the bottom two shelves and then I have more Oncidiums and some Miltonias a little bit higher up there and then along the top shelves of pretty much all my shelves I've got normal complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. I'll just take you in for a closer look at my Oncidium Pupicare Sunset. It's gorgeous at the moment. The fragrance is really lovely on this one. And this one's the Shari Baby right here. Most of my Oncidiums and all of my Miltoniopsis are in sphagnum moss, moss mixed with perlite. A couple of them I do still have in semi-hydro with Leca though. And I've only kept them in there because they don't seem to be doing too badly. For the most part, my Oncidiums did not like semi-hydro at all. But the more resilient ones have done pretty well. I've also got a Paphiopedalum at the back here, which is the American Hybrid variety. And it's doing quite well for me. It's in semi-hydro with Leca, um, but it's quite a ceramis heavy mix. And I put that little bit of moss on the top because yesterday when I was having a look at it, it had a root poking out of the top and they are not supposed to have aerial roots. So I quickly put some moss over it. I hope it'll be all right. But yeah, it's clearly growing roots well if they've reached the top of the media. And uh, when I got it, it just had the one fan, so it's grown quite a lot. It's the Burragiera or Oncidiopsis Nelly Isla, which is one of my favourite orchids because of the fragrance. It's just finished flowering and it's putting out some new growths. Uh, it's growing well and the pseudobulbs have plumped up. They shriveled quite a lot when it flowered. I think it takes a lot of energy from the plant because they do produce a lot of flowers. And they last for a very long time. I've actually got three Nelly Islas because I love them so much. and. I needed the red velvet variety, which is what this one is, and the other two were just the standard Swiss Beauty, uh, which are, this is one of them, it's putting out some new growths quite nicely. This one's the Alessiara Tahitian Dancer, behind that I've got some Cambrias, uh, the Cheyenne and Living Fire varieties. This is the Oncidium Sotuanum. Got the Oncostelli Catatante at the back here, which is putting out some new growth, so I'm hoping for flowers soon. This one's a no ID Oncidium that I got in a garden centre. And it's just started, it started flower spike and it's just started to open its buds, so they're really pretty. They don't seem to have any fragrance at the moment, but they're just really pretty. They're much bigger than the standard kind of Oncidium flower, and there seems to be quite a lot of them. You can see where they got their name Dancing Lady Orchids from. 
And I usually keep this guy downstairs, but I really wanted to show you guys. This is my Mastavalia Parlatoriana. Look at the colour on this. It's like a sunset. I don't know if you can really see. It's not really coming out on camera. But it's like a deep red at the edges and then it fades into an orange and it has like a almost purple line at the side. It's beautiful. Okay, so then moving on. I'm going to talk to you about my Rinker Stylus quickly. These are usually kept in um, the room next door but I pulled them in here just to talk about them quickly because they're doing really well. They're in semi-hydro. Uh, this one was a bit of a rescue. I ordered it from a nursery in France and it came pretty much with no roots. So it's finally recovering. It's stalled for a long time. You can see it's finally starting a, a new leaf. And some new roots. And we've got some roots down inside the pot which are branching off old roots. Which is really cool. And Nepenthes here. I keep quite a lot of Nepenthes. Um, I've got quite a few carnivorous plants. Nepenthes are probably the easiest to grow alongside orchids to be honest because they like the heat. They like intermediate conditions. They don't have a winter rest. They're, you'll pot them in the same mix as orchids. They're sphagnum moss with perlite and bark. Keep them moist at all times and they do really well in self-watering pots. And they're probably one of the easiest carnivorous plants that I've got to care for actually. You can see this one's got a fly. Let's see if I can focus in on that. Doesn't want to. And there's a fly trapped in its saliva there. So yeah, my Rinka Stylus are probably one of my favourite orchids next to the Miltoniopsis. Uh, I'll do another video separately on my Vanda types. I've got some Bulbophyllums along here. And this is my Phalaenopsis Happy Fang, sir, that I keep putting photos on Instagram of because I love it so much. The, as you can see, it used to have a lot more flowers and they are starting to fade now, unfortunately. But it does keep producing new buds and new flowers. It's really beautiful. It's a um, less complex hybrid. It's a little bit closer to the species, so it is fragrant. This is a little terrarium that I made out of an IKEA display case for my miniature orchids. And I've also put some terrarium plants in there and some live sphagnum moss. So we've got Trias picta, or I think it's now called Bulbophyllum pictum, um, here. It's a really cute little orchid with squashed pseudobulbs that look kind of like apples. That's producing a few new growths around the back there. See? And then here I have got, uh, I really don't know how to pronounce this, Lepanthus telepogoniflora. And that is this tiny little orchid here, for reference smaller than my finger. And you can see it's got a flower spike there, which I'm quite excited to see because it's got a flower that's actually bigger than I think the whole orchid. And this one's another Bulbophyllum pictum, or Trias picta. That one I got initially and I didn't think it was doing very well. And I was doing an order with a different orchid nursery and I saw that they had some quite cheap. So I bought this one, which looks a lot better. It had some new growth starting, which you can see is starting to mature into bulbs. But this one's actually now started a new growth. I think it's going to take it a little while to recover though. And I've got some live sphagnum moss in there. Uh, Utricularias, which are another type of carnivorous plant. Uh, Drosera capensis. Down here, they're not orchids, but I've got some Adenium abessum or desert roses. And also some orchid seedlings. Uh, I really would recommend, if you're ever doing an order with a nursery, popping a few seedlings in your basket because it's a really great learning experience and you get an orchid quite cheap that you can learn a lot from. Uh, so up here my bowl of film and I've also got a Brassavola nodosa cross back to a Brassavola morning glory which is a nodosa hybrid. And another carnivorous plant is an Australian pitcher plant, a Cephalotus follicularis. Some more Nepenthes. And then over by the window, most of my Vandas are, or Vandaceous orchids. So I've got Aerides rosea, which has a flower spike at the moment. 
uh, Vanda Pachara Delight in the back there. This one is a Vanda Denisoniana. Uh, Rick Narita's Bangkok Sunset, which I love. It's got a beautiful fragrance. Uh, Aranda, which is cross between Arachnis and Vanda. Gyrac Velvet, it's got a picture on the tag there. And another Vanda Hybrid, it's uh, just a white Vanda Hybrid. They're all doing quite well at the moment, producing lots of new roots. And behind these on the windowsill directly are my Cattleyas. So I've kind of got quite a few Cattleyas because they grow quite well for me. They're all in semi-hydro. I've got a few seedlings here. This is a Violacea seedling. And this one is a Cattleya Mont Elegante, which has a really beautiful cluster of pink spotted flowers on. And the new growth, I don't know if you can see in there. No, you probably can't. It has a sheath starting, so I'm really excited. That'll be the first time that one's flowered for me. And this is my Cattleya Tokyo Magic. It's got a really nice fragrance. It's done really well for me. Really nice shiny plump pseudo bulbs as well. And I've got a no ID Cattleya right at the back there, which is a bifoliate Cattleya, but it also produces unifoliate growths. And I do have two lots of buds on there, if you can see that. And then here, this plant is the Ricara Francis Fox, which hasn't flowered for me yet, but it's really beautiful. It's in the middle there. Hoping it'll flower this year. It suffered a bit on transport. You can see it's got some yellowing leaves, but it's pushing out quite a lot of new growths at the base there. So I think it'll do okay. It's got, getting new roots down in some lacquer, so that's good. And then behind, I've got my species and primary hybrid Phalaenopsis. My Holka Stylus MS Sunlight, which is cross between Rinka Stylus Gigantea and Holka Gossam Flavescens. Uh, Encyclia Cordigera. Uh, this one's a Phalaenopsis Samira, so it's a primary hybrid between Violacea and Bellina. Love how glossy the leaves are on this one. And we do have a second flower spike, which has just started there. So I'm quite excited for that. It came with this flower spike, but it hasn't really done anything. It hasn't dried up. And they are sequential bloomers, and the, they can keep the flower spikes for years, but it's pushing out a new flower spike instead, so I'm happy with that. Here I've got some sort of odd orchids. I've got my Zygopetalum crinitum down here, which is picking out some new growths. Peristeria alata, which is also called the Holy Ghost Orchid, or the Dove Orchid. It's the National Orchid of Panama. It produces really huge flower spike with really huge white flowers, which literally look like they've got a dove sitting in the nest in the centre. And apparently they're really fragrant. Um, I didn't think it was doing very much. So I went to unpot it and maybe put it in more of a sphagnum mix. It's in semi-hydro at the moment. And I actually found loads of new roots growing, so I quickly put it back and left it. They're supposed to have quite a harsh winter rest to be able to get them to flower. And I've only, I only got this in January, so I don't know what it had before. I didn't water it while I had it, but it didn't really shrivel or do anything until now. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. I might need to wait until next year for flowers and give it a quite a harsh winter rest. Got Dendrobium phalaenopsis. I have four denphals in total. Um, I like them, but they're not my favourite orchid. But they grow well, they have really pretty flowers, what's not to like? And then we have Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory Leodoro, which is a gorgeous orchid, I'd really recommend it. It's quite a big plant, but it produces multiple flower spikes, it keeps its flower spikes for years, it'll branch off them, you'll end up with a really beautiful display of really fragrant flowers, which are gorgeous. And this one is the Phalaenopsis Joy Fairy Tale, which is a really nice pelloric hybrid. Really waxy flowers. I'll show you one that's not directly under a grow light. And they do change colour as they're getting a bit older, so what I've just showed you was a bit older. This one's a slightly newer one. 
and they're just beautiful. I've got some Vanda seedlings. Back there, we've got a Sideria japonica, which is the Minmaru version, which is the miniature. And I've actually got the larger version as well, which is just here. So you can see the size difference. Um, more desert roses. The back, we've got one Maxillaria telefolia, which is huge. And I did put a question up about this one because it looks very different to the one I've got that actually flowers. And this one doesn't seem to flower, but having said that, I'm going to have to eat my words because there's a tiny little flower spike there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, just coming out of the new growth. And then this is the Maxillera telefolia I have that actually flowers. Really beautiful coconut fragrance. It's really strong, especially under bright lights and hot conditions. It's really just come in and it smells of Malibu and this actually is variety Malibu so I don't know if it's a commercial hybrid that's been bred more for its fragrance but the pseudobulbs do look completely different the leaves look the same shape these ones were originally grown under the same conditions on the same windowsill you see these ones have more oval pseudobulbs it's a huge plant, it's definitely flowering size. This one's got fatter, rounder pseudobulbs. Uh, my Drosera capensis has a lot of flower spikes at the moment, as you can see. It's obviously getting lots of fruit flies. At the back, we've got an Angrecum ibernium, which I got recently, but it's producing a new leaf there. So it's obviously doing okay. I did read that you can stall them really badly by repotting, but I repotted it anyway, and it seems okay. Um, this is my only Neophenicia hybrid, which is actually crossed with a Rhynchostylus celestis. So I'm really excited to see the flowers from this because they're a really nice bluish purple colour and apparently they inherit the fragrance from the Rhynchostylus. So I'm really interested to see what that'll be like. Um, this one is Aerides odorata, but the variety Alba. And it's producing quite a lot of new roots at the moment. I've actually just put this under the grow light and it seems to be doing really well. You can see all the anthocyanin pigment. So the grow light is obviously pretty strong. And the grow light I'm using is the Gemma um, chip on board LED grow light. I've got two of them. I purchased them because I really wanted to provide more lights on my higher light orchids. Because obviously you can see I'm, I'm quite limited for room in front of this windowsill. I've got a clothes hanger that I use as my Vanda hanger. And that's fine. Um, but I want more Vandas. So I was kind of thinking if I can grow them potted, which it seems that I can, and just water once a week and let them dry out between waterings, then I can have them on something like this with the grow light. This is a full spectrum LED grow light. So it has a range of different colored LEDs in there and then like a magnifying glass uh, effect to kind of, you can see the back of the wall there. You can see like the prism effect it creates. Probably can't. It's like, like a rainbow. Um, Adenian abessum seedlings. And that's pretty much it. I will do some more in-depth care tutorials on individual species and hybrids. And I've just ordered a, quite a large um, haul of vandas from a nursery in Thailand, actually, um, which I'm going to do a couple of experiments on and see kind of how they do potted and how they do under the grow lights and um, we can learn together um, so I'm really excited for that and I will put a video up with the unboxing from that because I'm super super excited to get them just before I go this is a uh, Ostradella centrodenia it says on the tag but I think this is actually called Epidendrum centripetalum and it produces really cute pink little flowers I'm not it's more in spite of me than because of me, to be honest. I've not taken great care of this orchid, but it's a really hardy orchid that seems to take a lot of abuse and bounce back still. So I definitely recommend it for anyone. It does produce a lot of capies though, but that just means you get a lot of uh, plants. Right, thanks so much for watching. I will post updates um, with more in-depth care tutorials. And I'll probably start off with Miltoniopsis because I've got this one, which is supposed to be a yellow variety, which is just 
I, I'm sure those buds are about to open. I keep thinking those buds are about to open and they don't open, but I'm fairly sure they're open soon. And then I'll post a more in-depth tutorial on the care. Okay, so thanks so much for watching today. Um, please do let me know in the comments down below if there's anything that you want me specifically to talk about because obviously this is a new channel and this is my first video so I really want to get an idea of what people want to see from this channel. Uh, thanks very much, bye!